morning. <laughs> to you as well, Crow. <sighs> so, the night was actually relatively tame. Cold at points, but this ramp I got going on similar to the method I used before two months ago when I was down in New Edinburgh and it's just working quite well for the most part but still a bit of issues I woke up only once in the night found this park to sleep in in Doll's Corner. I believe it's called it Linwood Park. And I set up the tent and got in about around 10 or so. Woke up close to 3 and then drifted back off a little bit later. was going to potentially get up and get moving earlier in the morning but I figured I'd let my phone get a bit more charge but I can just find a nearby restaurant to do that in slight change of plans decided to not head to the Nepean district. Mainly because, well, I don't think it's worth it. Not with the time constraints that I have right now. Well, if I'm ever back in Ottawa, I'll make it a... Uh, I'll make it a priority to see it and the Westboro district and Barhaven I didn't explore any of southern Ottawa a few people have passed by my tent and a gaggle of kids just came running up to it right before I hit record and so we're quite excited to see it. One even suggested to kick the tent to see if there was anyone in it. But one of them had the better idea of calling out to see if anyone was actually inhabiting said, said tent. And I said, yes, there is indeed someone in here. And then they went on their merry way. my backpack I discovered was leaking a bit last night so if any of you who have been watching me for a while remember the Peterborough videos I made when I was first in the city of Peterborough it was either in the first or second video I pulled out a bottle of Detol antiseptic oil. Yeah, I still had that. I've had it for all this time. And apparently it started leaking last night and caused a bit of a tear in the bottom small nothing major uh, 
I may, before I leave, purchase a new backpack. I might. I don't know. But while I was in here, slightly cold at points, I thought of a better idea, or a add-on idea for staying warm. Before I leave the city, I'm going to see if I can purchase some amount, maybe a couple or maybe three or four self, self, well not self-control, battery-powered heating pads. That might be very handy. At least for the earlier half of the springtime. I could just put them across my body and it would hopefully warm up enough. And also, not just warm up my body, the entirety of my sleeping bag. And the blanket and the ground that I'm sleeping on. Hopefully not enough to cause a fire, though. I may be warm, but I don't want to be ablaze. <laughs> Funnily enough, I'm a bit more chilled right now. In the early. Later morning that I was actually in the earlier half at night. I guess Tyler Joseph was right. It's colder in the morning than what it is at night. Though I don't think my bones are held together by my nightmares and my frights. I think that's the bone marrow that does that. But, yeah, I'm gonna charge my phone a bit more, probably type a bit more of my theories, then get moving to the Alta Vista district. That's the one I will pass through to get back to Orleans. I was going to go there anyway after the P.N. No. I'm just going to go straight through there. As I specifically also want to explore the Huron Gate ghetto. If you remember my last exploring Ottawa. No, no. No, not my last. My before this trip, my 11th Exploring Ottawa video, I went through the Northern Vanier ghetto. It was very quiet, very peaceful, at least at the time that I was there. But, and that was the most, from what I had heard, the most well-known ghetto in the northern half of Ottawa. Southern Ottawa and I think Barhaven are have some areas that are well not so great. But Huron Gate is apparently regarded as the worst one in the city. It's the most famous ghetto in all of Ottawa. And I don't mean any of this in a derogatory way. I know it's, well, situations of how they get, the neighborhoods get to that point is long. It's very long and it's very calculated from societal issues. But I'll probably talk more about that once I actually get to it. So. All right. Well, I'm taking notes of the fact that uh, Bell's Corner is 
quite the religious community. There's one church here. There's another one literally just... Actually, a few building structures down. Then there's another one, I believe, at the end of this road. Oops, one sec. Sorry. And then, within almost the same block radius on a separate street, there is the mosque that was at the end of the last video. Interesting. Nothing major to observe of that, it's just, well, they're very tightly compact with the amount there are. This one's Anglican, according to the sign. Down a ways, there was quite a few townhome duplexes, similar to ones that I would mainly, well, that I've mainly seen in Toronto, back when I was living there. And also a lot of Tudor style homes, more Western European. German or Swiss style architecture. Alright. Over there is the center of the neighborhood. And then heading out that way east will get me into the Alta Vista district. After a bit. See if there's a bus that may Oh, go a ways into it. But uh, I'm going to charge up my phone in a, probably a restaurant of some kind, and wash my hands, because that damned atoll, once I noticed it had spilt in my backpack, it got on my hands. It's an antiseptic, so, well, cut some of my hands, it might be good to sterilize them. But, uh... I don't want to touch my face, really, or mouth until I wash my hands properly because, uh, well, could potentially be poisonous. So, yeah, that's nice. Okay. I'll get up that way. Okay. Just ate breakfast a little while ago in a ref restaurant and charged up my phone a bit. And kept writing. Now I'm heading in, well, I'm looking at the map right, down that way. It should, if I then somewhere make a left and then a right over a bridge, get me into Alta Vista. This neighborhood is just the center of Bell's Corner. First impressions, it's a lot more open than much of Ottawa, at least as far as I've seen in terms of the centers of the districts. Or, well, it's mainly a separate neighborhood within Canada. But, I guess just building structure wise, it's a lot less. It's a lot less congested. Okay, I'll make my way down there. Sorry. I'll make my way down there and then um, see if there's a bus that I can catch into Alta Vista. Oh. And in relation to what I spoke about, and I will continue to, I guess, try to more properly outline in this video, uh, what I spoke about in the last video, I... Uh, I'm not, well, right there, I'm not, um, see a bus. I'm beyond trying to... That's a 
Sorry. No, it doesn't look like it did. Anyway, I'm beyond avoiding taking buses and trains and whatever else. I'm not going to in terms of once I get on the... Well, once I get out into the countryside, away from Gatineau in Quebec, I'm not going to be actively trying to find bus routes to take, or trains, but if I happen to stumble across a station, or if a bus picks me up, that if there's a bus that's willing to stop for me that's going to Laval, Montreal, or to any other destination along the way that I'm trying to get to, I'm, if I have the ability to pay for it, or if they're just going to let me on, I'm not going to refuse it, is all I'll say. Okay. Let's get up that way. Well, that was a rather painful bus ride for my right shoulder, and I'm sure it was rather awkward for a majority of the other travelers on the bus. But I made it to Algonquin College. Looks about the same as many other colleges I've seen. Or universities. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I don't know, actually, in some regard, with the whole... The terror that's been made in the back of the bottom right-hand side of my backpack. I don't know if it was just the spillage of that antiseptic or if it was also the now very much predominant metal spikes of what is my breaking... my... my slowly dismantling part. I don't know, but it's holding up pretty well so far. I'm not hearing any little t -t 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 splitting of the seams. Maybe when I hear that I should start worrying. Oh, I'm going to walk up there a ways to the main road and try and catch another bus that should directly take me into Alta Vista. I don't know if the one I just got on actually was going to go directly there. That's why I got off here. So, well. Well, what do you fucking know? Of course I bump into one of these, because apparently it's secretly legal for everyone else in the goddamn province and the city of Ottawa to drive an off-road vehicle on the roads Except for me. It's a law solely tailored to, uh, uh, well, not allow me to drive on the roads. I, I'm sorry that I, I never knew that or ever discovered that. Now I know why my family members betrayed me. I'm, I'm very sorry now, I obviously. I know I was... why people were doing it, of course. Now I know. This is... Quite interesting. I just got a very apparent sense of deja vu. Because this area, this district I'm in right now, which is called Center Point, looks, especially this corner right here, almost identical to the area that I used to work in in Toronto when I was working for my first paid job at the Mega Corporation from before that I've mentioned. It looks almost identical to a corner in the West Hill neighborhood of, of the Scarborough District of Toronto. Obviously there are differences, but just the general layout looks almost completely identical. I 
Yeah, especially like this building right here. There, there was a look to be a more lower middle class, averaging apartment complex that was right across from the plaza that the store that I worked in was. Yeah, just. Thought I'd film this and let you know of that observation. That that's it. I'm going to get on hopefully another bus over there that will actually go straight into the Alta Vista district. And then from there, hopefully, I can walk to the Huron Gate Ghetto. So yeah, let's. I'll, I will report back with more information once. Once my objective has somewhat been achieved. <laughs> well, look at this. Don't expand so I got on a bus it was yet another awkward very cramped ride for me and the passengers and uh, well I made it to here on road this is in the station there I've done a map and apparently I'm in well I'm in Alta Vista now but the main sector of it is just down a ways. And while walking along this sidewalk from the station over there, I just so happened to find a shopping cart that was ditched on the side of the road. And you have to be daft to think that I was not going to try and rig up something with it. And it actually worked. So... This will come in handy for the next little while, and my shoulders can stop screaming in fiery agony. So, this looked up, or at least this day has been, well, better so far. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna get up a ways and then keep recording. So, okay, I... through uh, the main sector of At La Vista. I didn't even realize it. I was going to film some of it, but uh, oh well. It's back down that way. If the camera would focus. Oh, whatever. And down over here, behind these, actually, well, technically, yeah, behind these apartment complexes, not the ones in the sky, the ones on the ground, there's the uh, Huron Gate Ghetto. I could get to it from taking this street here, but instead I'm going to go down to it appears to be an area with more businesses. Just so I can wash my hands, use the washroom, and then, uh, uh eat lunch. The lunch that I packed yesterday. For today. But before I do that, I'm just gonna sit here and turn my cart so it does not roll out onto the road, because that would be an intelligent idea if I did that. Okay, at the least I can grab it if it does. Sorry to any bus drivers who stopped for me to pick me up. But I'm just gonna rest. I want to 
talk about further what I was saying in the last video in relation to how we are all massive hypocrites on every possible level. So often, at least as far as I feel right now, we hold We say we hold specific moral values because cognitively, we cognitively, feel us psychologically, we actually do. We do genuinely feel that those morals that we've concluded are beneficial to act upon something smells like it is on fire. I hope it's not those tanks of gas in the back of that truck. That would be a very terrible thing. Anyway, we cognitively think that that is correct. We, we think that those social behaviors that we say are more beneficial to act upon. We actually believe that. We do. At least as far as I can tell. But because of mass psychiatric disorders that have plagued the world and sociological issues that have caused them and physiological issues that are also caused by our societal factors, which there is absolute definitive proof for, well, we come into conflict with Well, people all around who, because of those disorders and illnesses, hold those Sorry, I stopped recording because someone came into the bus stop and I, well, I didn't want to be a nuisance to them. And then after that I just decided to type out more of my theories, keep typing at them. And then I decided to walk over to the area I was going to, down a ways. Now... Okay, well... Eating my lunch is going to well now. I guess my dinner is gonna have to wait uh, because I am very much still going to go through your own gate. Uh, but if you can tell by the where are you? Sun in the sky. It's going down. It's getting closer to dusk. So. And I don't particularly want to be in what is regarded as the most dangerous neighborhood in all of... What am I grabbing? Let's see that. The most dangerous neighborhood in all of Ottawa uh, at night. And from everything I've looked up about it. I'd rather not be. Nothing against, well, everyone who lives there, you know, but for incidents that may happen, oh. Well, 
obviously I'm not trying to generalize everyone who lives in Huron Gate, but just to quickly continue what I was saying before. Most of us cognitively believe in our morals, but we're either really not good at recognizing when in reality things that conflict with our morals on a philosophical level are being acted out. We're not good at noticing them, or most most people, as far as I'm concerned, aren't good at noticing them. And I'm included in this, and some... Well, yes, obviously, to some degree, I think I am. But, um... Or... We do recognize what is in conflict with our ethics, but we never actually truly expect the conflict that could arise towards our, well, our ethical ideals. We don't ever actually fully expect it. We don't expect it in the, in the ways that we mentally think that it's most likely going to play out, or a way that it could potentially play out, even if something close to it was to happen, it's most definitely not going to be... the way that you envisioned it. And even if it comes close, for those things that go... For those things that deviate from your thought process, even if they're very minor, small in retrospective, it's... Well, I often think it... I think it can greatly distort your judgment of what to do in a scenario. And as I mentioned at the end of the last video, a prime example of two things that happened to me here in Ottawa that I will reiterate again are, well, about a perception of time, fuzzy, about a week and a half ago or so. I was at a person's house, and they had, someone they know had a, their children over, and they were doing just, they were working on uh, some documents, and they were getting agitated. Uh, person I'm talking about with a lot of things, and the children were, you know, being developing children, and uh, screaming and yelling and playing about, again, as healthy, natural, normal, developing children do, even if the child was to have a psychological disorder, cognitive issues, that aspect of their behavior is still absolutely normal, as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, they were being disruptive and it was getting on their, uh, it was agitating them, and they warned one of them that, uh, they were going to spank them if they continued, and that eventually culminated in them spanking. Not entirely from my, what I witnessed, hard, but still. And the child took it in strides, and I'm happy that they did. They literally, once they were done, they looked at them and stuck their tongue and went, yeah, and kept on behaving the way, the way they were. So I'm glad that they took it with a brave face. 
but that doesn't negate what happened. That, as far as my opinion goes, is child abuse. Just, if it was done to anyone unconsentfully, abuse in its entirety. That's assault on a person. And that's also in terms of a parental, that this person wasn't their parent. But, either way, just as a adult caregiving figure, uh, that's, uh, well, that's exerting a whole lot of authoritarianism and control over someone. Trying to basically force, force their compliance with, uh, well, brutality. Physical brutality. And I did nothing. I sat where I was sitting. I was stunned. Didn't display it, I don't think, very well at all. Facially, but I was... Well, I was stunned. As I had always told myself that uh, if something like that were to happen, as with many other things that have happened, I would step in and try and aid the person being harmed in some way and also speak to the adversary. Some way to try and help the situation for both of them. And I didn't because I was so lost in thought process at that moment that I didn't know what the hell to do. Accompanied with my morality crisis. I didn't know what the bloody hell to do. Another incident that I mentioned. I was with someone in a car ride and we were talking and it was in relation to what was in it, what was going to be, but I didn't end up getting this job. Uh, a restaurant job at, an, at a northern Indian themed restaurant. And, well, I gave them details and they said, uh, well, basically I don't trust what the manager said because uh, according to what polygraph tests read, and I know some people who work with the police force and who do polygraph tests. Uh, Indian people are known to lie. It's almost habitual in them or basically culturally uh, ingrained in them, in a sense. So they just basically do it instinctually. And I'm almost not paraphrasing here. Obviously, I'm somewhat paraphrasing, but... No, that, from what I'm recalling, if I'm recalling correctly, their wording was almost exactly that. And I was again stunned hearing this. That was one of the most, that's one of the most blatantly racist things I've ever actually heard in my life. One of the most blatantly racist, incredibly ignorant, incredibly untrue, completely 100% untrue. That's completely moronic. And uh, I didn't know what to do, but that time I actually did, at the very least, say something. Once they were done talking, I just quickly said to them, well, polygraphs are highly inaccurate. And then they just sort of dismissed it. It was like, well, as I did with my wording. But um, after that, nothing more was said about it. And I didn't say anything more. Now these different people, I am... Um, they have helped me a great deal whilst being here in Ottawa, and I thank them for that. I am grateful for the help they've given me at points here. I'm not using this to negate the help they've given me given me. But that doesn't ultimately matter to some degree. It's no excuse for what they did as far as I believe at the moment. It's well it's just completely wrong. Oh and 
same person in this regard, and I should mention this quickly. You know how it said I had gotten, well, it was the, uh, in my, I have more respect for a blatant neo-Nazi and blatant hedonist than a cynic, subtle neo-Nazi, or anti-capitalist video. I said I had obtained a job at that pizzeria in Orleans that I applied to. Yeah, I only ended up working there for one day. Well, not because I disagreed with the employer's methods of management or anything. Uh, it's just they had already told me they could only put me on part-time. And they only had me on one day, and then they were going to try and find a week or so for me to come in, and they could train me personally and have to properly, well, work according to their wants. But, uh, seeing as I was then, I ran into conflict and I now decided to leave March 31st from the city, well, that ultimately ended up being pointless, so I called them and said, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna have to quit. And they were like, okay, it's fine. And they, but though, they actually wanted to pay me for the first day that I worked there, the only day I worked there, so they did. And I thanked them for that. But... A bit off that topic, uh, this same person, when I told them about this, um, they asked, they asked, are they Italian? And I said, I, I don't know. Ethnicity-wise, they appear to be some form of Mediterranean, probably South European, Southern European, and, uh, but I don't know their nationality. But, uh, I asked why, and they just said, well, when you go in there, tell me what you notice, and I said, well, I'd like to know what you're thinking, and he said, well, uh, they'd been in there, apparently, and they thought it was a money laundering scheme for, uh, drugs, for drug dealing, and it could have been or it couldn't have been, I don't know, I don't know. And from my look, and though from my analysis of the place, that is not the in indefinite conclusion. Not at all. That's an, that was not a definitive conclusion as far as I'm concerned. Were there some things that were a bit iffy? Mm, kind of, but no, not in their entirety. And from things that I had seen of the employer's behavior, their personality, things of the sort, uh, that how they were behaving could indicate a, new, a number of things, as is as I know from psychoanalysis. So, no, the definitive conclusion was not a drug dealing. And hey, with my newfound political views, as I'll talk about in a bit, I've changed my stance on certain things. Uh, well, on a lot of things, actually. Wrong wording. Uh, I don't have a problem with you dealing drugs. I don't have a problem with you selling them. I think it should be legalized for you to sell any drugs you want. I'm not in favor of you doing all types of drugs. And not in favor of you doing them constantly as a means to absolve conscious loneliness or trauma. But... I am for, at the very least, your right to do so. And I think there are certain substances, substances that can be used well for relaxation, just in moderation. That's my stance on it. But, anyway, I once again did nothing to confront them further on this. And I have nothing to say for that. I don't... I don't know. But, uh, maybe before, I'll, before I leave, I'll tell these people how I feel. I don't know. But for now, let's get into Huron Gate. Uh, here we are. This is first. Oh, this is the entrance to 
here on Gate Ghetto. My phone is dying quite rapidly, I think, because of the cold. I'm going to have to put my charger in my pocket. My portable charger and uh, just get various shots of the neighborhood. So, I think I'll head down this way a bit. Just to, well, get some more footage. I don't know if this is Target Parks Family Clubhouse. That might just be a community center. Oh, maybe I could actually charge my phone in there. Who knows? But uh, I'll get a bit farther down that way. So from just the literal one block radius, it seems that I've walked. I have already noticed mass infrastructural problems. You can tell by just the pavement on the sidewalks and the roads alone, and the exterior structuring on well, the outsides of most of the residential homes. That's right. It's literally right on the opposite side of the seemingly, well, the more, I guess I'll just say, well kept externally in terms of the structure of the facilities, mega corporate stores on the other side of the main road. So, yeah, that's not promising, and that's very sad. So, oh my god, I don't know what kind of bottles these are. It looks like some kind of alcohol. <sighs> well, given now where the sun appears to be. I don't think my plan of trying not to stay here into a portion of the night is going to work. Oh well, that's too bad. What happens, happens. Let's see if my numb fingers will let me to zoom in a bit. Just to get a better view of things. Heading down that way, because I think it just loops around from the rest of the road behind me back to, well, whatever street I was on before, so I'll try that. This is an interesting heart display. Caught my eye from the road. I haven't literally have not walked too much farther from that apartment complex I was standing in front of. But also what caught my attention was that. Look at that. Just like in the northern Vanier ghetto. Right over on the other side here, this rather vacant patch of land in this park. All this park is dividing these two neighborhoods, for the most part, slightly connected. But that is a drastic shift in communal maintenance and structuring. That is vastly better than what you see over here. 
things to be more standardized middle class. Again, very, very obvious and very, very depressing. Okay. So again, I barely, barely walked further into the area, but I noticed another sharp divide. So this is what seems to be the main center of the neighborhood. This is more towards the edge of it. Uh, those houses at the very end of the road down here might be the end of the ghetto. But I notice, or well, neighborhood closely attached to the ghetto. But I've noticed the infrastructure of these housing units is as slightly more improved compared to the ones to the latter. Which is, well, well, that's just very interesting. Oh, and one of my, well, what I can somewhat deduce from it, would be there, private property, of course. So, not seeing any police activity right now, but from my own research and knowledge of these social structurings. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point of the day, police, or maybe closer to the evening if I'm walking further down here, police do quite a few patrols, especially on the outskirts of the main streets surrounding this particular area, close to or even situated technically in the the ghetto area. I would not be surprised at all. Now, I'm obviously not going to walk in here because, well, well, technically it doesn't, at least as far as I can tell from the signs, say no trespassing. But right now, I'm going to assume that it's uh, prohibited. So. I'll keep heading down that way, and then maybe if I can make a left somewhere so I can maybe trace the sort of invisible border between this side of the community and the rest. So I'll see. Huh. Would you look at that? Again. Literally, just half a block down from where I was in the last clip. And again, slight improvement in infrastructure. Slight on the privatized meta-gated, I guess I'll call it, community next to here. In fact, I wonder if that technically, this part here especially, I wonder if that technically counts as being part of the ghetto. I know it definitely counts as being part of Huron Gate, just the area, but I don't know. Let me try walking down this road and then, well, it looks like it's bending around. So I'll head over to the other side of the area and get a better, well, get better observations, I guess as to how many, because this is divided, this small part of the community that's privatized is divided from the other one, the other half that's privatized. So... Yeah, I'll just get over there and 
see if there's a pattern that's forming. Because if there is, then I may be drawing some conclusions as to possibly why, well, it's environmentally structured this way. All right, again, privatized section. In fact, from what appears to be how the layout is geographically, this looks like it's connected to, or this road connects to the, well, entrance to the other, to the privatized community, part of the community that I was just standing at. Again, just literally a block away. And again, noticeable uptick in infrastructure compared to down over right beside it, down over here. There's a, well, public school behind me. Well, it's Catholic school. But also, again, over there. This communal structuring from over there and behind me to compare to the more central part of the community where I was first off is quite a drastic well over here it's not oh, as you can tell it's not completely it's not entirely majorly better but it's at the very least some amount of improvement but over there looks like an incredibly large well improvement high difference and again I'm noticing it's divided by a patch of land looks like another park and I noticed on the one over there the park that I was at over down a ways there was a gate well a chain gate that didn't seem or at least as far as I could tell maybe I missed it and I, maybe I'll see it when I look back over the footage that um it didn't seem like there was any sort of walkway or opening f in the gate for you to actually access the park from said opposite neighborhood that's very interesting so let's continue on okay somewhat different than communal structuring so here this section of the community the infrastructure again it doesn't look the greatest it's in very poor condition it's somewhat similar to the central area where I started from but this one is this area is privatized as you can tell surveillance or warnings of surveillance and well Crime watch. But interestingly, again, it's right across from those housing developments that are once again divided by the continuing, uh, it's the same park, the continuing, well, park over here. It extends kind of actually, it looks like almost, it looks almost like it somewhat wraps around so over there it's kind of encompassing that neighborhood as if it's trying to well as if whoever initially had rights to the land legal rights to the land around here and then they when they decided to build those housing units as if they specifically tailored it to not build housing structures in that area and construct a cheaply made, well, communal park. As if it was meant somewhat to divide this area and that area.
Now, I won't tell you my entire, what I'm starting to form as my running theory yet, until I get over to those, hopefully if I can get over to those apartment buildings there, because that's still considered part of here on Gate, but I don't know if that would be considered part of the ghetto over there. I'm actually starting to get a little fuzzy from what I looked up about, well, before coming here, about the neighborhood and the, well, the crime rate and the, well, very obvious low income problems. I'm now, now I'm, I looked up the general area and certain street names that were prominent. I don't remember much of them at the moment. Because I did it, well, quite a number of weeks ago. After I got back from Vanier. But I'm getting fuzzy somewhat on what would well, what is, I guess, seems to be considered the ghetto. As usually, from how the term ghetto and how it's defined and used in slang term, typically means an area of very underdeveloped and, well, not, not the best functioning environment societally so it's getting a bit fuzzy it's also notably different from well having stayed in I stayed a few, well, yeah, I stayed a couple nights and passed through the Denzing ghetto in Toronto in the week while I was sleeping on the streets before leaving the city. Uh, it's looking considerably different, and from other areas I've walked, especially in the Scarborough district of Toronto when I was living there. From areas that were of, well, more problematic uh, structuring. But yeah, it's just interesting so far. Let me get up to over by those apartment complexes. I'm gonna have to go back around that way anyway to get out to the main road that I'm going to take to go all the way back to the Searville district and then back to the Orleans district. Move along. Interesting layout. So now I've walked, well, about the length of, I'd say, two whole blocks away from what was, what I'm pretty sure now was the center of the ghetto. And, well, I'm once again puzzled. This apartment complex, these aren't the same ones that I was pointing at, those are over there, are in very poor infrastructural condition, at least externally and from what I can see a bit internally. But yet again, privatized property, or, well, technically all of this is obviously with the real estate, how in a capitalist society real estate markets work. Well, obviously everything is privatized, but this one, these ones that I'm pointing out have been 
are visibly stating that they are privatized, and there have been some that I actually have seen now that say, no trespassing, do not enter. If you're not a member of the, or a member of a household within that section of the community. So, this is somewhat developing my hypothesis a bit further in my mind, but there's a few holes in my logic, but we'll see what I conclude once I exit the area, once I'm done exploring. Okay, so I've walked a considerable distance further than where I initially was, which is by that apartment building over there, around to this area of Huron Gate. And where I'm standing right now, the surrounding structures are a bit worse. Getting into slightly better, but dipping down to what what it looked like in the center area, slightly. And I recognize the street over here that I just came off of, it's called Kitchener Avenue. That's one of the ones that I had seen when I was looking up for this area. But again, something I've noticed whilst walking down that avenue from where I'm standing now, coming from the left, this entire point of the back of it, this row of houses along here, and on the opposite side of the street, look to be more of standardized middle class and were considerably more well kept externally in terms of maintenance. And at the very edge of, well, this section of the avenue that turns off into another part of the community over there, another subdivision, I noticed there was a plot of land for sale. And of course, there was a sign for an area displaying that it was originally sold by Remax, the mega conglomerate real estate agency that has a mass monopoly on the house marketing business and it was down close by it was actually on the fence for one of the homes I was a part of the stated privatized subdivision and you can see here from the back end of these homes to this section of the neighborhood there is a vacant patch of land it's divided by a park again So that's starting to somewhat tell me something. But the main road, Huron Road, is, well no, actually, Huron Road's up a bit further. Walkley is down here. So, continue walking up to that. Yeah, I don't know what else to say whenever I'm I've just been stating that for the last few clips. I'm going to keep walking here and then there and then there and then here. Very riveting adventure, I know. So I made it out to Walkley Road. And once again, from what I can tell, the infrastructure has... Well, it's back to slightly improved at best, but still quite poor. We're all from this side to the other end over here and then somewhat extending over there but even as I was walking along this road Banff Avenue there was a stretch of the subdivision that once again had more appeared to be highly improved well architecture structuring and sorry and 
and it led down to another area that was close to the labeled privatized subdivision. So that's again picked up on that pattern by now. Oh, yeah, and to my cart in here, underneath all the stuff. You know how earlier today when I was saying that I was going to go to, to Alta Vista that you told me about a cousin you had who lived in the Alta Vista district of Ottawa and they mysteriously went missing about 25 years ago in the shopping event at Black Friday of 2004. Uh, well, I think I know what happened to them. Well, that's in rather bad faith, quite literally. And I also wouldn't expect anything less from, well, a place that has affiliations to the Salvation Army or directly from them. Anyway. And yet again, another open patch of land. This time, not a park, though, it looks like. Oh, no, wait. Nope, that's a baseball diamond, if that... Well, it's the only reason I can think why that chain-link fence would be so high right there. I don't know if you can see it in the dark. But, again, that's one of the privatized areas over here, given it's... Well... Those are the apartment buildings that I was over by a little while ago. Given their proximity to them, that would be the area that those private houses are in. And it again looks very enclosed by this empty bit of land, away or divided from what's predominantly over here, seems to be going from over here to standardized middle class, I guess, somewhat. If that's the area, again, somewhat, to lower middle class over there. Then there's a bit more, what appear to be standardized middle class homes here. And same over on this side here, with then a pretty nice light display on the side of that house. Neat. So... Yeah, that's very interesting. Actually, for these ones over here, I don't know if I mentioned, because I mentioned the ones over there, maybe a bit more lower middle class in terms of what seems to be the affordability of keeping the property maintained, but this appeared to be, you know, I was going down a ways from the apartments, appeared to be more of standardized. So, just thought I'd point that out. And there's a plaza with a few stores. Okay. All right, and we're back to, from what I'm observing, or what I can see with the minimal amount of light, considerably less well-kept development structures considerably less, even worse than the, well, most of the private subdivisions down in the more southern half of what is, I guess, const technically considered to be the ghetto area of the Huron Gate neighborhood. And again, both this side and this side, am I pointing on the right there? are stated to be privatized. But again, considerably less developed. Again, I am trying to cobble together my own little hypothesis from my analysis of the area. I'm almost to Huron Road, so I keep getting up ways, and then actually eat my now dinner 
that I've had in my wrist lace. Uh, it's not no good. Not gonna be able to see it. Had in my pocket in a Ziploc bag for the past oh well, now two days. So let's hope it's still fresh enough. All right, this I actually recognize from when I was researching this place, this intersection here. Cedarwood Drive and Baycrest Drive. I know you can't really see the signs well in the light, but I recognize this area distinctly. So yes, this is what is also considered to be a part, a major part actually, of the ghetto. So, yeah, um, again, even worse than just down the road, considerably more problematic infrastructure, considerably worse. Far worse than the other side of Walkley. At least the other side that I was at that was enclosed by the open patches of land. Far, far worse. I know it might be hard to see in the dark, but there is cracks, high cracks along some of the walls and boarded up windows on some of these well, buildings. Okay. I think that's Huron Road right there. I'll make a decision whether I continue down this way or I just go straight to the road. Eh. Ah, fucking, I might as well just go down this way. Once more, now we're right back to much more, in fact, this is the most high-end out of the mall that I've seen, apartment complexes. Far more well-maintained in terms of structure. Again, right close by where I just was, on Cedarwood and Bycrest Drive by the much lower infrastructured apartments. And this is also close by to these lower developed homes over here. And wouldn't you know it, it's divided yet again by another goddamn park. Right smack in the center of it and over there that's over by where I started when I was talking about morality again. There's a... That's right by where I started and there's quite a few mega to moderate corporation branches. Okay. I think I've well, seen enough for now. Well, that was an interesting little endeavor. Learned a lot. And saw the community. It's quite somber, most of it. And I'm right back out where I started. In front of a whole slew of mega corporate branches. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to at the very least get down into Searville, out of all the Vista, and, yeah, and then I'll share my thoughts. Uh, on the whole experience once I'm down there. Okay. So I'm down a ways on Walkley Road and I literally 
just stumbled upon the head office of uh, the mega Canadian grocery retailer Giant Tiger. I had no clue their corporate headquarters was in Ottawa. Hmm. Interesting. And interestingly enough, or, well, even more interesting, I guess I should say, right across the road from it is what appears to be a very much just from infrastructure again alone. A very rickety and rundown subdivision. Because, of course, there is. So I'm back in the Searville district outside the a outside a Dazer Dazer Jan Dazer Jan Dazer Dan a Dazer Dan insurance branch and a Herzig Eye Care Clinic or glasses repair shop whatever the hell it is at the intersection of Saint Laurent and Innes Road, and I'm going to walk all the way down Innes Road to get back to Orleans. Yeah. So, my theory for here on gate I don't know how old the entire community is I haven't looked that extensively into the actual history of the area but given the state that most of the more structurally compromised buildings were in, from my guess, the central area of the neighborhood or in the area that has been considered the ghetto where where I started mainly and also I guess the opposite side of Walkley Road uh, at the intersection of uh, Cedarwood and uh, Bycrest those two areas from the looks of it going with my theory I can maybe assume that those are the oldest housing structures, those are the oldest areas. Now, whilst going through there, I saw only really, maybe I think two squad cars. But given the, well, press that the area seems to get quite often on the city news, and other areas around it, I wouldn't be surprised if tonight was just, well, there weren't very many patrols. But, what I'm thinking is, because I found it continuously as I kept going along, as I said, very strange, and i noticing a pattern with the housing uh, layouts, where there were geographically positioned. Particularly how many subdivisions in the entire area were divided by large parks. Some rather, in terms of the play sets, obviously seem to be cheaply made.
So my thinking is those very poorly maintained building structures are the oldest housing developments in the entire area. And initially, they probably, considering what I saw of some of the seemingly the neighborhood cultural life and the majority racial groups, it's predominantly a black neighborhood. And also, there was quite a lot of what seemed to be Eastern European ethnicities, uh, people of more Balkan descent of the Balkan region in South Eastern Europe. So those were the two predominant uh, racial groups. So let's say, for the sake of my theory, and I probably, th given again what I'm going with with the how the housing structure is, what the p position and state they were, the condition they were in. seems to be the, the community, probably, before those stated privatized um, developments were put in, were there, and they were predominantly of, well, the inhabitants were of those main two ethnicities. And... The other areas that had the more well-maintained, structurally, uh, housing settlements were not there, and it was just empty, for-sale, retail-end space, probably owned by uh, uh, whatever the one I mentioned uh, in earlier in the video. The mega corporate. The, quite possibly, I actually think they're the largest, they might be the largest retail corporation agency in all of North America. Or at the very least, Canada. Anyway, uh, owned by some retail agency. It was bought by some mega corporate housing develop, development company, which is very plausible because whilst there I saw advertisements for, I think it was called, well, they were advertising right out, two advertisements right outside the stated privatized subdivisions. Uh, oh, goody properties. I think that's what the name of the development company is. The development company that I saw their two advertisements was. But some development company bought up the land however many years ago and started, either started immediately building new housing units or maybe waited for a bit for a bit and held on to it for the purpose of the maybe waiting till the value of said land had risen to begin production on it then or what could have happened is they drummed up advertisement for the area of new housing being put in with promises of uh, clean, sparkling, beautiful, shiny, pristine subdivisions. New ones. Brand new going in here. And then they, well, began production. But strategically, they built... The subdivisions that were stated to be privatized in 
what appeared to be, I guess, the direct center of the land that they bought up. And they strategically did that because they knew it was right next to the more impoverished and lower middle class areas. That maybe by that time, if it was, if Huron Gate was considered a ghetto at that time, maybe, or again, I either just of the lower of lower income class they strategically only built housing developments in the center or maybe somewhat center expanded a bit to the I guess depending on where you're looking at it from a map, I'll say if you're looking at it on a map, top to bottom, the left from the center of the area they had purchased to more into the left side of the land, next to some already built neighborhood subdivisions. And they specifically did not develop any houses on a certain portion of the land they'd purchased, and then decided to turn it into parks, or just leave it as vacant open spaces. Maybe they got in touch with some of the city council, or the councillors, wh whoever the councillor is of uh, Alta Vista, or maybe specifically the Huron Gate neighborhood whoever, and somehow either secretively did, well, the politicians either knew about their supposed plan, maybe they cut a pair deal with said politicians, or they just convinced them that, oh, we'll build these parks, it'll be nice for the community, it'll be It'll add some uh, fun and enjoyment, some add outside physical activity for the kids of the area, Wh whatever else. And so they built some parks there and other areas that, uh, other parts that encompass the subdivisions that they were building, they just left vacant just completely vacant and they continued building until the projects were done then probably charged a whole lot for them probably because they advertised the hell out of them as being these incredibly brand new developments, and given the obvious, very obvious, mass gentrification of the local community that was, may, maybe it was going on before the land development happened, or the housing development, or maybe it started at the exact same time, and maybe again there were pair deals that happened between the housing developers and the whole slew of mega corporations that were quite literally, literally right next, like right next door to the entrance to... Oh. Oh, hey, little friend. You enjoying my talk? No, it's okay, I'm not gonna harm you. They are the third honey that I have seen just in the suburbs tonight. gentrification, literally right next door to the entrance of the, one of the sides of the Huron Gate ghetto.
and knew that they could advertise if they did do pair deals or not, I guess. They knew that they could advertise it as being right close to like very well established businesses that could be great providers to the community. And once all was said and done and those specific housing units had been successfully isolated enough, again, there were areas that weren't, that were pretty close to each other, looking more of those who were living in it, and, well, obviously, don't want to characterize base just upon appearance, of course not, but how it was, how the neighborhoods were maintained, appeared to be more of standardized middle class, bordering right next to very much lower middle class. So I guess maybe they couldn't have gotten, maybe they didn't get completely to the way they were hoping. But for the most part, they got the localization of the area in, I guess, the realms they wanted in. So... Then, what I'm assuming is either separate development company or the same one came in and either purchased the, maybe purchased the did some sort of pair deal or something, or maybe, again, just somehow purchased the apartment complexes that were right by, well, that were in the actual, in the lower income areas that I saw, or maybe as well managed to purchase some sort of acquired rights to the land that the private subdivisions were on and knew that given the vulnerable situation that most of the community inhabitants were in could charge up could actually charge up for residential stay in the area, or any other added, say, property maintenance that was wanting to be done to someone's house on the land that was stayed to be privatized. And because of good old classic racism and classism, they, the, the developers of, either the developers of the complexes and the, the housing units, decide, just didn't care to put any sort of investment into actually <coughs> don't care, and at the time didn't care, still don't care, to put in sort of any invest, any sort of investment into the actual needed resources of the community, and just have let the infrastructure go to rot, whilst, well, exploiting and wreaking mass commercialist benefit from the inhabitants of the lower income, and also wreaking profit from the inhabitants of the newer developments that appear to be more standardized middle class, on the grounds of it being advertised as a newer 
better addition to the entire area of Huron Gate and its convenient location next to a bunch of branches of large companies. And what was another point I was going to make? Oh, or, or potentially whoever owns the property and also just the entire the buildings for the apartment complexes, or maybe previously own the land rights to where the, the housing developments in the ghetto that were stated as being privatized and or said you no know, trespassing they did pair deals with the land developers of the newer additions to the entire area and knew then that they could just well because I guess maybe it would have been more profitable for them stop putting any sort of the minimalist attempt into maintaining the infrastructure of the areas that they had the rights over. And as for policing, if, in terms of noticing the convenient locations of the parks, if some deal was reached with politicians of the area, or the city itself, in its entirety, that these were going to be very marketable housing structures, well, then they'd send in the police or policing patrols to just keep an eye on the area as it was known for, well, high amounts of crime rate, to keep them subjugated, and to keep the inhabitants of the newer developments feeling more safe and secure, or just as well to simply keep, just in their eyes, keep the riffraff away from, well, our land developments. I wouldn't be surprised if someone of, of black racial background or someone of the central to eastern European backgrounds that were mainly the inhabitants of the area. I wouldn't be surprised if they were walking more so directly into the, if they had wa if many of them just walked or I guess what would be called loitering or standing around in the areas that are more, that are newer. I wouldn't be surprised if someone reported them to police and they showed up in like five minutes just to ask what are you doing here someone called about a suspicious person i wouldn't be surprised about that at all or so as well given the most clear example to me given where i where i walked was when i left the what was known as the Huron Gate ghetto area, coming out from Cedarwood and Bycrest, to that incredibly well-maintained apartment complex. Like, incredibly well-polished, gardens were kept in neat condition, the lighting systems worked perfectly well, incredibly well lit. No malfunctioning hydro problems, no flickering lights. Very, very well kept at the, ver at the front, at the entrance to the area on Huron Road. Again, right next to the gentrifying mega companies. 
and again divide it up from literally just down the road the area that would be very much considered heavily impoverished and infrastructurally broken divide it up by a friggin park open land to just keep some amount of distance between the inhabitants of the areas that they were profiting from initially at the very least and the what would be to them problematic areas so that was my initial analysis or that's my initial analysis of the area right now tell me what you think about that if you want all ears I'm sure there's a few holes there in my logic some here and there but I actually think that I'm at the very least onto something with that okay I am going back into Orleans tonight I am considerably cold, especially in my hands. I did not bring my gloves on this venture, which was a stupid idea. A very stupid decision. Very stupid. I'm going to address, I think, one more thing when I get into Orleans and then sign off for the night. But first, I gotta get there, so let's do that. Okay. Alright. Well, I got at least a little bit into the Orleans district, but for now, I'm saying fuck it. I thought I could make it back to where I've been mainly staying whilst you're in Ottawa tonight. But no, I'm too exhausted. I am right now sitting at a bus stop. All transit routes are closed for the night. They're off service. Off duty. And Oh, would you look at that? The sun is starting to subtly, you kind of almost see it, breaching the skyline. But I'm in a... I'm in a neighborhood of Orleans called Blackburn Hamlet. It's in the western Orleans. So, I'm gonna set up my tent and sleeping bag out behind a tree in a vacant patch of grass between the houses here. So, to finish this off with what I was gonna say. By this point of my travels, my theories I'm writing, implementations, everything I've observed, examined, my experiences, my research further, all of it, I have changed quite a bit of my, well, my political viewpoints. Not to a major extent, I would say, at all, but a notable change, altered, I guess, could be another word to use. So, no, before politically, I mainly identified with libertarian communism. The communist part still very much, and it's 
initial original ideals as laid out by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in the Communist Manifesto. But uh, as for being a libertarian, well, that's changed. I would now say that most of my political beliefs align with anarcho-communism, social anarchism, and democratic anarchism. Collectivism, obviously, that's what it was before as well. And anarcho-maximalism. Now, if you don't know what that is, well, eh, I'll, I'll explain it in a, another video. Why they've changed so much, well, why I've particularly moved from being a libertarian to an anarchist. Well, quite simply, for everything I've been through, my observations, analysis, all of it, these constructed set, particularly legally set systems of all kinds, regulated by any form of government, I no longer believe that even the slightest amount can help, like with just the most basic structuring of a set political system. No, not at all. I have seen and researched so much and gone to a point where well no system as far as I'm concerned any set like constitutionally legislatively set system none of it can work there will always be a deviation of some kind from the initial goal of the system because it's pretty well inevitable that someone or something will come into massive conflict with it. whether the set system specifically directly or indirectly influence whoever to do whatever. It's impossible. To a beneficial extent, at least as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> oh, and I'd also just quickly like to correct something I briefly, very briefly from my recollection, said towards the end of my first Exploring Gatineau video. I said that uh, the, the eco-political system of feudalism, well, pretty well doesn't exist anymore, that there are no technically feudalist nations. In as far as I'm concerned, I was almost completely wrong about that to some degree. As far as I'm concerned with the ultra-capitalist, neoliberal fascism that has rapidly spread across this world, subtle authoritarianism in every regard,
I do believe that a pseudo form of feudalism has overtaken the world. But I'll explain more of that in my videos regarding my theories. Now, one more thing as to those. I don't want this to sound overly egotistical. It's going to, but I don't want it to. I have poured a lot of heavy thought, a lot of time, a lot of research into these theories over the last last two months or so. And I've been scrambling as fast as I can without rushing them. I do not want to rush scientific research at all to get them done before my departure date of March 31st. The whole reason I initially was going to leave on April 20th was because it would have given me ample time to finish them. But that came into conflict with uh, certain things, so. Oh well. They are very detailed. I'll just say. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to be able for the ones I'm still writing right now. I'm going to finish what I can of them all tomorrow. Print them off. Send them off to... Hopefully most of the people I cite in it who are still alive. and then read what I have done of them here on YouTube and show some diagrams that I've made for some of them. And I wanna stress, like I said, this is gonna sound very egotistical I genuinely do believe that the information that I've learned and that I have to provide will, if anyone bothers or cares to actually review them, take them seriously, anything of the sort. Well, I feel they will be greatly beneficially impactful to the scientific community. I genuinely do. Now, there are things that I can be wrong about with them, obviously, and I don't wholeheartedly believe all of them. Most of them, yes, I wholeheartedly am right now, for the most part, certain of. But there are some that I'm moderately certain of, some that I'm unsure. One of them, which is my weakest theory, I think I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm not entirely sure com completely about, well, it's the one that I'm least sure about in terms of its provability. I don't think I have enough proof, even if I don't cite it fully as I may not have time to in the writings as of right now, even if I would have been able to get them written out 
as in depth as I want to. Well, I I still don't think I have right now, as far as my knowledge goes, enough proof for it. But there is still I think I the only reason that I want to get it written out because there is I do think a potentiality that it is possibly correct that it could possibly be a very key link to on well, this regard how a well theory concerns neurodegenerative diseases so potentially it could potentially be linked to the development of many of them but how i know one of them is true certain one not just from all my other examinations but what's given me hope for all the other ones that i am certain of being true is the fact that this one theory in particular deals with the psychological phenomenon of mental dissociation which i experience i have somatoform dissociation Oh, quick side note. I think at points, many points, for the longest while, I've been pronouncing that disorder, well, the disorders in that category, wrong. I think I've, I've been saying disassociation, which is technically what you're doing, like what your cognitive perception is doing. But. still over there just checking. technically that's what you're do what your psychological state is doing with dissociation dissociation but in the clinical terminology it's called dissociation so but I suffer from somatoform And how I am completely confident right now in that theory and how it's giving me confidence for all the rest that I am heavily certain of is my symptoms of dissociation, altered perception of external reality, have completely remitted. No, I mean it. Seriously, they've completely remitted. They've ceased. Gone away. An actual, this has been an actual effective treatment. Just so much as gaining the knowledge that I have of writing this theory out. Now, here's another realistic possibility. Could it very well be a placebo effect? Sure, absolutely, but if it's a placebo effect, it's a pretty damn strong one, and it's a pretty damn long-lasting one, as ever since I started writing this one out, which is about now, probably a month ago now, I've gradually been feeling so much less dissociated and even my memory as far as I'm concerned has improved a bit the blurred memory issues that I suffer with now I still suffer with them there is still a slight amount of uh, memory recall disrupt but it's diminished greatly so much. So, I genuinely think these theories, now that I have them and once I share them, they will change. A lot of the scientific field, particularly most of them deal with the realms of psychology, neurology, just neuroscience as a whole. 
sociology, political theory, discourse, one with theology, philosophy as well, a lot with philosophy, ontology, phenomenology, and philosophy, ethics, morality. So, I'm happy to share them. I'm also going to try and, well, I'll post all the theories written out, what I have written out them, in the, probably the comments section of each video, well, maybe it'll just be one video, I don't know how long it'll take. They're going to be far too long to post in the description, and I'm just going to put timestamps in the description anyway of the videos. And also, hopefully try and make some PDFs quickly and post them online, so that anyone can have access to them and read them. And I would appreciate if anyone's even made it this far in the video and still watching that you watch those ones all the way through, please. I'll state this at the beginning of the video or videos I make regarding the theories. If you watch no other videos of mine all the way through, please watch those ones, please. I've said before that I would appreciate if people took time, if they had it, to just watch these videos. But if nothing else, Please just watch those ones. Please. For your own educational sake. And that's not me trying to say that I'm more intelligent than you in any regard. But please just watch them. Review them, critically analyze them, critically think for yourself, try to induce it, just examine the videos, the theories that I've made, and then form your own conclusions from there. And as for how I've been trying to change my, well, been trying to change myself in many ways. I've mentioned that before. And I'm very much trying to really commit to changing my personality and persona. Very much trying to. And it seems to be working. It seems to be succeeding. Even my psychologists, when I spoke to them last and few calls ago that I had with them said that they've noticed real personality changes in me. And I consider that a win in some regard. Alright. I'm going to bed. Wonderful night.